Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Witchy Wednesdays at One. Yay! Aloha. Aloha, Susie. So this is Maria Shell, and you are live with Witchy Wednesdays at One. If you are joining us on the Facebook page, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are joining us through the Zoom link that's been provided, please say hello in the chat. You may also be watching this video on YouTube and thank you so much for joining us there. If that is the case, be sure and smash that like button. Leave any comments or questions in uh, the comment area and we will get back to you. Also subscribe to this channel because that allows me to continue to bring forward wonderful tips, tricks, and special guest speakers to you, the audience, our sacred community. And today I am honored and blessed to have Susie Aledo from Hawaii on as my special guest speaker. Thank you so much for joining me, Susie. Nice to be here. Thank yeah. you for for allowing me <laughs> here in your private space. It's absolutely my pleasure. You have inspired me in so many ways during our sisterhood. Um, and I uh, would love for people to get a chance to know who you are and how you are serving spirit at this time. So why don't you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what has led you to be called to a spiritual or magical path? Okay, I think, you know, growing up in Hawaii, born and raised here, um, you have a lot of different influences and Hawaii is one of the most spiritual places you can be mm. to live, you know, outside of like Alaska. Uh, but more so, I've had kupunas, ancestors that went abroad, they traveled a lot, and they studied ancient medicine, they studied um, ancient cultures, traditions, and they brought that back to Hawaii. And every now and then, we would have them pop in and provide us a little bit more details. Um, when I was a little girl, I'm going to say way back when my mom was actually pregnant to me. You know, <laughs> this is, I can still remember this clear as day. She was pregnant on my grandparents' farm, picking out uh, vegetables for dinner. Now she was carrying me in her womb, which my soul actually jumped out of her womb, took a look at the scenery, looked at all the different shades of green, saw cardinals flying. And what I came to know as my family siblings, older siblings, and my cousins playing on the farm. And I said, hey, I want to be born. So I jumped back into my mom's womb, induced her labor. And before I know it, I was actually coming home with all these smiley faces, just cuddling and kissing me. And so that began my journey here on earth. And throughout life, I've had this deep, penetrating voice that no one else could hear. And when I say that, it would always come to me as though you're talking to me, yes. audible. And it would say, I am that I am. You honor me. I am your God. And these people do not know any better. And they was always referring to how we were raised, my parents, um, you know, other relations like cousins, relatives, and what have you. And so it was, it was very evident that throughout my whole entire life, this low, deep, penetrating voice was always present, guiding me. And so my gifts evolved because I listened rather than fought, rather than suppressed. I was trained that way. And that is how my gifts started developing. Because mm -hmm. even though people would say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't do this because of other people, the way how other people may perceive it. I still continued on being God-led. Yes. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I say. 
Yeah. Uh, so um, what was kind of that big first aha moment that led you to realize yourself as just as a leader rather than just a practitioner of your faith? I think my calling came when, you know, as a child, I, I have to go back and just go over this. We all go through some form of trauma, whether it would be mental abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and sexual abuse. We all have gone through it, or we are aware of somebody else going through it. Yes. Well, imagine me going through all of that, right? And so the retaliation, that, that part of all those things is what made me who I am. We're going to fast forward in 2017. I went through this massive overhaul that spirit led me. I was triggered by my twin, my twin flame. And I didn't understand quite exactly what was actually happening to me. And I'm not a person who used to like using internet because, you know, I know a lot about internet uh, and softwares. And so I was very hesitant, but again, being God-led, having that audible voice, my higher self come to me and say, meditate. And I'm like, how do I meditate? And they would say, meditate. So. It was in 2007, started January 7th, where they would put me in a state of, I'm going to say just like a coma state, where I was, I would sit and start meditating, had no clue. You know, I've taken martial arts, but meditation didn't involve this. Okay. It was long periods. I would be sitting in there 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 32 to 36 times a day. Oh, wow. And. I was guided, okay, you have to go back from the time you were born. Let's go ahead and clear out all the pilikia. Pilikia means rubbish, right? Yeah. What are all these projections that, was, that you experienced? Remember who that was and let's go ahead and forgive them. Yeah. So that's what I started doing. And that's when my full kundalini was awakened. And when I say Fu Kundalini, I'm talking from the toes to my head and above my head. Yeah. So powerful that I was frying out my electrical appliances, you mm. know, microwave, the stove, the refrigerator yeah. at home and at work. Right. So, so um, yeah, um, that, that was my first realization. But prior to 2017, I was actually used as a healer you know I was called in to heal somebody okay whenever it was convenient for people right, right. um as long as it was hush hush yeah. <laughs> so I was healing people we don't want to share the woo woo with the normal right <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and so um you know I, I already had the gift of tongues yeah and so I started healing people with that and what came after using the gift of tongues was the interpretation part. Mm. Yeah. And How so how long did it take from the time you began to speak in light language until you were actually able to interpret your own language? I'm going to say instantly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm speaking in light language, but I haven't come to understand my language yet. Um, yeah few more journeys maybe and i'll have that figured out with, right. with that intention set right yeah to work right. with that right right and um, so you have a question no Sorry. go ahead okay so with that in mind everything i do is very when i when i start when i start with my clients you know exercising these frequencies you know again you have to hone in on these gifts. It just doesn't come overnight. Right. Yeah. yeah. Who are you listening to? Are you following the crowd? Are you listening to be somebody that you're not? Or are you actually within your soul and gravitating there and grabbing what's in here, harnessing your own power? Because you can't replicate somebody else's power. There's just no way. You have to dive deep within your soul. And that's what the spiritual community, I'm going to say this. I'm yeah. sorry, but I have to. I'm very transparent. I see this happening often. 
Yes. People overlooked their soul because they want to replicate other people. If it resonates, it resonates. I'm not going to downplay that. Right. But I see this happening all over social media. And, and, and I just feel sad. I'm, I'm sad. I'm not projecting judgments. I'm not doing any of that. But it, uh, it's sad because when you watch a person go from, from this to that, right? Because yeah. they want to follow in that footstep. They're totally leaving their soul. They're, yes. they're not congruent. And so when you dig deep, you harness your own power. Allow it to lead because the potentiality of that is greater, is so great. As yes. you notice, I don't follow anybody. I do right. my own thing, right? Yeah. I don't follow. I don't, in other words, I don't replicate what you're doing. I don't replicate what other people are doing. Right. It's all me. I'm God-led. I'm not a follower. And so when you become, when you have that mindset that you're not a follower, right. and it, this might be going off chart, but it, there's a reason why I'm bringing this to this. When you're aware of what you're doing, yeah. I'm telling you, God is going to lead you in magnificent ways, right? And so when you listen to that voice, that voice, you have to listen to that voice, discern upon it. Is it for your highest good? And if you know that it's for your highest good, brah, the service that's going to come out, that love, that compassion, that humility, it's yes. like, whoa. And then you're developing more power, more power, more power, and more power. And which brings me to these frequencies that I have, these quantum frequencies that allows me what people quote unquote use term astroport. So these are one of the things that I do outside of being a trauma-informed coach and a mentor. I'm a quantum healer. You know, I, I'm a medium. I do exorcism. Um, I do remote viewing. And so you have that ability to do all these things when you're truly tapped in and tuned in to that frequency. Like right now, I can see frequencies between you and I. You may be on the phone, but Maria, I can tell you right now, you may be all the way in Ohio, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I see these frequencies that are presented before me that allows me to connect directly to you. And you may not even see it, but I'm feeling jittery. I have right. jitters right. because I'm connected to that frequency. And so the, that frequency, everybody tries to ask me, what are those frequencies? And I'm saying they're comprised of numbers and letters, just like that movie Matrix. It, right. It's like shimmering down. But it's beyond just those numbers and that matrix that allows me to see this wave, right? And right. connect. And so that's part of the quantum. Yeah, that's yeah. that's in magic what we describe as being beyond time and space because you're exactly. taken out of the linear presence of now and allowed to view all of the different aspects of time and space from that space spiral or cyclical sort of view as opposed to being linearly oriented um, right and and that's how we create like time jumps in our um ascension yeah. is to work within that quantum to bring forward from the past ancient knowledge or knowledge from our ancestors and apply it to our future selves so that we can like skip a whole lesson, right? And go from point A to point B, zoop on a dime. Uh, right. So let me let me tap on top of what you just said. Yeah. So you're talking about linear bringing past to present to future, right? Try being in the present moment. Yeah. Present in that past. So when I do mm. my mentorships, right? Yeah. And I train with other people. They asked me, how do you do that? I said, okay, give me a scenario, right? Don't tell me anything about what you did back then. Right. They're like, okay. So I said, 
now what you did not know and what you did not see is that I'm, I jump back in that past and I see exactly what you're doing right in that past. Now I understand what you're seeing. Then I'll, I'll ask them questions. And they're like, how'd you know that? I said, because I just asked reported back to the past. Right. I saw exactly what happened. Now I'm bringing it to the present. Now, how does it apply to you in the present? What's going on? Do you see the behaviors of or the experiences that you had has created who you are today? Where right. are you at? with today and your emotions and your feelings. How can we overcome all of those things? And then now, let me jump into the future. Will you allow me to jump in the future? Yes, okay, boom, and I'll jump into the future. Okay, I see this going to happen, this is happening, this will happen. And they're like, oh my gosh. I said, but the choice is up to you. Right. I can see what can happen to you in the future, but because we're presently right here in the now, you can change that trajectory. Yes, I can give you a potentiality of what will happen. But again, you're the one that's going to be exercising your footsteps, not me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, when I read tarot for people, that mm -hmm. is often how it works. Uh, an ability to reach into that past and link it with the present moment to, to guide someone to the realization of what's created their present circumstance, right? And right. then see the potentiality of the future that um, is on course to manifest if no changes are made to the present circumstance, right? Correct. And allowing you to choose for yourself, okay, is what that future looks like pleasant, happy? Is it aligned with your highest potential? And if not, how do we make changes in the present? to close, more closely align you with who you want to be instead of like who you're on the path to be in this moment, right? Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing I do is I guide people through past life regression so that they can experience from a third party perspective, their own past lives, uh, both, both this current timeline and other incarnations, right? Yeah. Um, so that they can see those lessons from that third person viewpoint and go, oh, that's why now I'm scared to death of water, right? right. Um, even though it doesn't apply to this current lifetime. Like, I don't know why I've always been scared of drowning. Like, well, because in, in the past, right? And you've right. had that trauma through, right? Um, so, and, and, you know, work on, then work on a plan. Okay. How do we, how do we get rid of that in going forward? Right. Right. Um, but anyway, I digress because I want to hear more about how, um, once you've had that Kundalini awakening, um, how is it that you work with people today? uh, to, um, help lead them into a more, um, expanded version of themselves? Well, you know, uh, exercising mindfulness is the key. Um, and this is something that I have to say because spirit is telling me that I need to say it. You have to have a lot of compassion. Humility. Have an open heart, but mm -hmm. a pure heart. Kundalini is just not given to just anybody. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. So there's a misconception. And people think, I mean, I see it all over, that they have the Kundalini. But I can tell you right now from my, my, the knowledge that I have and my teachings that I've had is that most people's Kundalini is, stops here. Yes. Right? At the heart. Yeah, at the heart. Yep. Let's try to expand from that and let's go all the way up here. Yeah. We can bring heaven to earth. That's why we say, as within, so without. Right? Yeah. So we want, as within, in, out. 
Let's connect that. Let's mindfulness, compassion. Don't be, don't exercise hypocrisy. Mm. You have to stand truthfully and with honesty. Sorry. Mm. Mm -mm. Do not apologize. I agree 110%. Uh, there are too many people looking for a quick fix now, and this is not a quick just right. kind of thing. No. Yeah. It's not. And so I don't like fakeness, and when it hurts me. And the reason why it hurts me is because it hurts the Holy Spirit. And um, sorry, I just got to collect myself here. No, you're fine. The kundalini so when i went through my kundalini and how it works is that i had so much electricity i'll give you a quick slowdown story real quickly i had dinner with one of my good friends kumi and it was during dinner she said susie i have a friend we were just talk, having conversation i have a friend she was a teacher she inspired a lot of children and it's so unfortunate that she had cancer, breast mm -hmm. cancer. And because she went through chemotherapy, um, all that excessive chemotherapy caused her heart to fail. Now she was an avid runner. Right. And so she's in hospice. And it was during dinner, Spirit said, go to her right now. Mm. So I said, Kumi, take me to her. She was in hospice. So we went up, immediately ate, left, the restaurant and straight up to her at the hospice i started talking to the nurse because i wanted to make sure that it was okay that we had their permission right to go ahead and speak to her so it was then that i learned that she just went into coma mm. yeah so i said okay can i pray over her yeah they said yes yeah. so the nurse led us into her big room it was really nice it was serene and she was in a coma. And I spoke to her, I went straight up to her ears and I said, I love you. You are love and you're loved. You're so loved. And I said, I am that I am. And her eyes went boop. Mm. And the nurse is right there. My friend Kumi's right there. And she's like, you're an angel <laughs> and i said is it okay that i pray over you and she said yes you know she spoke in that that almost barely speaking voice but she said yeah. yes and i said okay i'm gonna bring the angels forward okay and she said she just nodded her head like this and so i just started praying and and I don't do all of this stuff. There's no sense in you doing all of this stuff. And I, I respect it, okay, but I, that's just not me. That's not who I am. When I pray, I just pray. Right. You have more power coming from here, right? Right. Just this. So I started praying over her and um, she said, oh my gosh, all the angels are here. They have big wings. Mm. She's like, wow thank you and then i said are you feeling any pain right now and she said just a little bit i said can i pray over your body i said because your soul is still attached there and i can help ease your pain and so she said yes and i started praying over her body and she's like oh my gosh i don't feel anything thank you thank you thank you and so I, I already saw what was going to happen, right? While I'm doing this, mm. praying in gift of tongues, praying over her, awakening her from her coma. So I spoke to the nurses and I said, okay, this is what's going to happen. In the next three days, she's going to pass. And I'm going to be there to take her over to the next side. And I made sure that I was. Right. And I said, please call her parent, her, her family in and I'll return within 48 hours. Right. So they called the family in. We returned back in, in two days time, a day and a half or whatever you call that. And I spoke to the family. Now, 
I forget what her name was. I don't want to. Yeah. Well, she fell back into coma. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And they were there from the morning. The family were there in the morning. And I think I arrived about six o'clock p.m. at night right and they were giving me the prognosis says they, she hasn't woken from her coma whatsoever now the family is in the room right and I'm talking like 20 something <laughs> yeah they're all sitting around and so I said okay I'm gonna go ahead and pray over her so please don't feel uncomfortable but I'm gonna bring her up I'm gonna wake her up so I told her again I love you I am that I am you're loved. You're so loved. She woke up. Mm. And she was feeling uncomfortable. But I brought the angels again. And she just said, oh, my gosh, you're so beautiful. You have this white light surrounding you. And I, I know that you're going to be with me. And okay. so I left her with her family so that they could spend whatever time that was she passed the following morning. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, those are the type of things when you're being called to service, you get called to service, you drop everything because yeah. that's, you're being godlike. And when you tell yourself, no, I'm not going to go ahead and do it. Well, that's what you're telling God. Well, that's what you're telling your higher self. Yeah. You're not ready for it. And then you're going to be questioning, why am I not da, 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 da? Well, that's your own fault, right? Right. You listen. And that's how you begin to hone in on your gifts. Now, that is my medicine. And that's how I help other people, you know, around the world, Alaska, you know, Japan, Greece, right? Italy. Right. right. When people come to me and ask me to help them, and that's what I do. And they themselves can feel it. The heat. I pack on the heat. They're like, they will describe exactly what's happening. They have heat, this have this overwhelming healing sensation that follows it, and they start shaking. Mm. But that this energy that I send them is so powerful, so loving, so kind yeah. that they exactly know what it is that they need to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful that you are able to channel that power and light uh, toward the healing and transition of others uh, in such a profound way. Mm -hmm. um, and also that you can separate like your own needs and ego from your uh, divine calling um and know which one of those to follow uh without question uh, because well, so just, many people it, are just riddled with questions all the time um from those um those uh shadows that we have packed on throughout um other people informing us of who we should be right <laughs> um it's a powerful example of how deeply listening to your inner heart and soul um, can manifest real miracles or magic. Um, and, and I'm not a person who practiced medicine. I use a root of it to, to heal me internally, right? Meditation. I'm a very, I'm a promoter of that. I'm yeah. an advocate of that. Meditation and bread work, meditation and bread work. I can sit in meditation for six hours, mm. but I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> and the reason why I'm not going to is because I had back surgery. So there's a limited, limited time frame that I can sit in meditation. So the most I can sit in meditation is probably an hour. Right. Right. And so I do breath work. And so when you give yourself that time, and this is where everybody gets it wrong um, in the beginning right? Right. They're like, how do you meditate? Well, just remember, when you have these negative thoughts about your current life situations, your current experiences, your current worries, bring it right back to ground zero. Yes. Imagine yourself in a bubble, right? Yeah. And keep doing that. So when you, when you 
when your mind distra uh, is distracted, bring it right back to center. If that is just like how healing and when you're being called to do something. Yeah. So you may not even see what you're doing. Like, okay, let me go ahead and meditate. Okay, my, my mind is worrying. Oh, let me bring it right back to zero, right? Yeah. It's the same application as when you're being called to service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So you can, you can only hear the divine when you're at the zero place. Right. And that's part, because part of the whole Ho'oponopono is it, that that's in essence what that's about. Right. Is Bringing yourself right back to love. Back to zero. Yeah. We cannot forget that we were created in love, that we are love. Right. And and <laughs> that's who we are. We're love. We're part of this love triangle, right? This, yep. this family, this Absolutely. circle revolving thing. Well, that's so, why anyway. we feel so miserable when we are out of sync with who we are really supposed to be is because we are love. Yes. We are that we are, right? Love. Right. And right. anything that um, is not love uh, pulls us out of alignment with our truth exactly uh, so yep. whether it's whether it is disdain for others or whether it is self-sabotage and inner loathing right right All of those are uh, uh separation from the i am consciousness which is love yes so i am that i am i always and you know i am that i am I am that I am Christ consciousness. You're allowing, right? You're allowing. So you bring it in, on all, in here, you're bringing it all out, right? And yeah. so I am that I am. It's a frequency. I am powerful. I am humble. I am compassionate. I am kind. I am friendly. I am rich. I am abundant, right? Bring that all into the I am frequencies. Yes. I am that I am. When you utter those words 100 times a day, you become a frequency that is so powerful. But again, this I am frequency is going to know whether or not your heart is congruent. Right. You can't just say it just for the mirror. For what? For ego. Right. Because the heart knows and separates ego. I can tell you, oh, yeah, you practice this 100 times a day. You fill yourself up with I am that I am. I am that I am. I am powerful. You see all these great I am frequencies. Right. But the I am frequencies, which is a combination of God and the Holy Spirit and your higher self, they know if your heart is wrong. Right. So. But when you constantly practice that, and I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love the I am frequencies because I embrace it. It is me. Yeah. And it's when not you just carry... an empty statement. It is no. the feeling of being as one with source. Yes. Yeah. So I'm connected to, and like you, and like everyone else, we forget that we're connected to mother earth's energy what is mother earth's energy it's the food that we eat it's the lakes it's the rivers it's the sand it's the plants it's the mountains it's the sky right yes so people always laugh at this when i say you know what get outside in nature and ground yourself talk to the plants they're like why would i want to talk to the plants and I'm just giving you in a scenario, many scenarios. Yeah, that was yeah, repeat. yeah. <laughs> Why would I touch it, the plant? Why would I want to hug a tree? <laughs> and I'm like, let's go ahead and say, how was it that you were growing up? Did you get projections of opinions and negative things your way? They're like, yeah. I said, okay, try talking to the plant. Do you think somebody projected any negativity towards the plant? Oh, I never thought of that. I right. said, so when I ask, tell you, connect with the plants, it's because their energies are untainted and it helps to soothe with whatever emotions or experiences that you may be going through. Yeah. Believe it or not, we are connected to this frequency. We need to start utilizing these. 
Yes, when they ma'am. say, oh, we need to go ahead and, and wash away our pains and our hearts. What do you do? Go to the ocean. Thank the ocean. Yes, let's clear my body. Connect to it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all here for us if we awaken to it and work with it with intention instead of just stumbling our way through life, hoping nothing else bad happens, right? <laughs> Right. So not necessarily the intention part, but being mindful. Yeah. Right. Mindful of yourself, mindful of your environment, utilizing these resources, resources to your personal advantage yes. so that you can level up. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So I have a surprise, which I totally forgot to mention. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping that you're still with us and you're still sticking to us, but I do have a present. Yes. And I am going to be blessing each and every single one of you listening to this audio, uh, connecting here. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. What I'm going to gift you will help you individually. This will go, it's a frequency designed specifically for you. Mm. And you can never question, how is that? I'm going to tell you this quantum frequencies that I'm going to be providing you with is going to be driven by the Holy Spirit, provided to you in a gift of tongues, and it's going to work in your life. So what is it that you want to do? Do you want to get healed from a pain, from an illness, right? From emotions from a breakup, from a narcissist, right? Whatever your situation may be, this is going to help you. So before I get started, I would like everyone to just breathe in on an eight count, hold on an eight count, and release through your mouth on an eight count, and do that three times. So let's go ahead and breathe together. On an eight count, take a deep breath in with your nose. Hold it on an eight count. And release slowly through your mouth, all the pilakia, all the junk, all the emotions that's been holding you back, all the worries, the fears, all of that, anxieties. Take another deep breath in on an eight count. Hold on an eight count. And now we're going to release through your mouth all the pilikia, all the anxieties, the fears, the worries through your mouth. Take another deep breath in on an A count. Hold on an A count. And relax, breathe out. Now I'm going to go ahead and pray, but before I pray, I'm going to say, give thanks to spirit. You can pray along with me. Great spirit, I thank you for today. Thank you for this podcast. And thank you for the opportunity to share who I am and the gifts to talk about you and honor you. Honor Mother Earth, um, honor this time and space. Thank you for your beautiful creations, the heavens and the earth, the plants and the bees, the food that nourishes our body, our minds, our souls. Thank you for the four elements, fire, earth, air, water. Thank you for the four seasons, summer, winter, spring, and fall. Thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon me and the lessons that we have through our experiences, allowing us to elevate, allowing us to raise our consciousness, our awareness. Thank you, great spirit. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am Christ consciousness. We give you honor. We give you praise. 
I give you thanks. So now, wherever you are at, I'm going to be praying in the gift of tongues. All I ask is that you allow and be receptive for your blessings and your healings. Akuste amo ara e kana ma ivu ala ijer ma ive falo shara ma iverala ima she mu iver kwa ima shara mu ala akara ive amo ara amo ara akuste ima ala shara iverulo mu ya. Can I say me? Ha po arama. It tell a shara more. Get I verolo, my shara I verala in it. He kill my life, Jerema. Oh, Patara. He had a river. Quill shall I in me, my Jack O Tarive. Ha mo shara. Ha mo shara. A good Thank you, great spirit. We honor you. We honor you with all that I am. We honor you with all that we are. We're humbled for your love, help for your light, for the many blessings and the lessons. It is within these lessons that we find who we truly are. Are we a humble servant? We love you with all prayer. We love you, we love you, we love you. And may these blessings of healings be upon the receptor. Now allow them to allow. I thank you and I honor you, Holy Spirit. Stay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit, Source Creator. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Mm. We love you. Yeah. And so, if anybody needs, you know, would like to connect with me, they can drop me a message on Facebook Messenger, you know, or look me up on IG, Susie, S-U-Z-Y underscore Alito, A-L-E-D-O, and connect with me there. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. I don't have a website. I'm not going to, actually, I took it down because there was just too many incongruent souls. Mm -hmm. And I didn't find it necessary for me to continue on um, if their hearts are not in the right place. And I choose not to do with that. But I will go forward and bring one-on-one -on -one clients in and work with them individually. Uh, recently, I had two individuals who are currently under stress. Uh, they have been living with the narcissists that have become very vocal. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you name it. Uh, they've experienced it. Um, and yeah, the whole bag of tricks home. in those ones. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I helped one of the women, um, she lives out in uh, the East coast mm. and I'm hoping that she received the Holy spirit that will allow her to guide her. I did put protection over her and the kids. Um, 
but you know, again, I work one-on-one with clients. You can find me on here on Facebook. My name has been tagged. Um, I also have TikTok as well. So connect with me there and I'll be happy to work with anybody, one-on-one clients. Um, just be sure that you show up to the space with a pure heart because whether or not you know, I will know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes, you do, girlfriend. Yes, you do. Uh, thank you so much for that gift, that beautiful holy gift that you shared with us just now. Um, if anyone, a couple more. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah. There's also going to be a couple more uh, gifts that I'm going to be giving. Um, I'll be giving it to Maria. She's going to be posting it. I created an audio with musical backgrounds. Um, it'll it's done in light language, and it's called the self love. It's a free. So it comes in three, three parts. So listen to it and hopefully that'll help you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will be posting the links for the self-love audio um, downloads in the comment section below both the Facebook recording as well as the YouTube channel. Uh, so be sure and look for those in the comment section. And then uh, Susie has been tagged in this um, podcast, but we will redrop her details for her Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok into the comments as well so that you are able to find her. Uh, once again, I am just thrilled and honored that you were able to join me today. Uh, I look forward to a deep and consistent, uh, heartfelt, sisterhood between the two of us uh, Amen. yes you have always inspired me and um and shoot even reached out to me that time and you were like girl you got an entity like <laughs> oh yes yeah yeah so um so yeah um conf confirmation in that case of what i suspected was all i needed to put the steps in place that uh, removed that and, and reestablished my protective boundaries. Um, so uh, you have always Wait, been do, generous. Does, does everybody know about that? I had it on my Facebook, but yeah, uh, back in the fall, I actually attracted a negative entity um, during a period where my channel was open to speak light language. Um, but I hadn't properly protected myself before I got started. So my bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, for about three months there, my whole family was sick with RSV and the flu and pneumonia and um, yeah, a myriad of symptoms um, all the way down to my grandchildren. And, um, and then I put a very small video on Facebook, like, uh, <laughs> why do I feel cursed? And uh, when Susie saw that video, she reached out to me directly and was like, girl, you got an attachment. I know you're a witch and you know what to do. Just get about your business. And, and I don't know, I think I related this to you after that um, video chat, but after we were done, the husband was on his way into the backyard to let the cat outside for a while. And I was like, good, you go do you. I'm going to be in here doing me. And I lit up the smudge and made some holy water with black salt and began to do my protection and banishment on myself and my immediate home living room, you know. And I had actually done a similar process when I felt the attachment occur, but it hadn't, I hadn't stuck with it for long enough, right? And you and I had discussed seven days. So, but yes. anyway, and I did the full seven days all the way out to the property line. By the time I was done, it was all the way out to the property line. But but that first evening, as I did the smudge and I did the clearing and sprinkled with holy water, I got to a place where I felt like I had done enough. So I, I parked the things on my altar and sat back on the sofa. And within 10 minutes, I was vomiting puking and puking and I was like all right I see you I feel you you just come on out of there and I puked from the toes up um but after that um by the next day my family members one one at a time were calling me being like hey my fever broke hey they're letting me out of the hospital yes. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. so yes. 
So yeah, by the time the seven days was up, all of that stuff was um, nice and secured in a little black and white box. Um, and now I'm just going out sort of routinely, you know, like reinforcing those boundaries. Um, I think that is one of the dangers of doing this for a long time is that you think you've on, you're on your game because it's it's a course. Um, the the magical practices become a course of our everyday life. It's not something that we're saving for ceremony, right? So, right. So um, I was I got a little bit cocky, I think, because I was thinking, well, I'm doing magic every day. I don't need to go out of my way to do these protections and um, and banishments, right? I always do them in ceremony, but I hadn't been doing them in general. And right. uh, zip, line it up, my sister, because <laughs> uh, there is more in the universe than any of us are aware of. And um, and the ones that uh, that mean harm take advantage of that. So exactly. Uh, so having a guide or a mentor or someone to lead you into these places and to help you through your healing is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, essential but um, it is also to be uh, taken on with some amount of um, study and um, and really deeply listening to the heart um, because it is all too easy to pick a fake shaman uh, for that quick fix and uh, wind up like out of money and, uh, and, and still no closer to your enlightenment than you were when you started, right? <laughs> right. Right, right. All right. Well, many, many blessings to you. Thank you, everyone, Thank so you. for tuning in today. Um, we want you to just get out there and spread love as far and wide Thanks, as you possibly can. Um, have a very magical, magical day, magical life. And we will see you next week on Witchy Wednesdays at one. Uh, yeah. My guest will be. Let's see who we got. Oh, we got Belladonna LeBeau next week. You guys are going to want to tune in for that. And I think I just saw where she posted a pagan cruise that you may have an opportunity to buy into that'll be loaded with workshops and things while you're on the high seas. So that should be really cool. Um, we'll hear all about that next week. And once again, thank you so much to Susie. We'll be dropping those details in the comments. I love you all life like mad, uh, make life magical, and we will see you next time on Witchy Wednesdays at one.